همان
Good evening, everybody. It's time to start tonight's show, so please take your seats. Thank you, lights people. Good evening, everyone. My name's Joe Curtis, and I'll be the MC for this evening. And what a great show we've got tonight. So please be comfortable. Uh, wear your mask if you want to, or take it off if you want to. So just a, a few things before we start tonight's program. Just make sure that all of the cell phones are off or on silent, please. And um, I'd like to welcome you all here tonight, especially any new people or visitors. Do we have any visitors in the room? Okay, so we all know the rules about um, an emergency. If we have one, we've got exit doors behind me, over here and out the front. And uh, we'll all leave in an orderly fashion if we need to. Um, the, the toilets are out through the back. Uh, if you're new and you didn't know that, that's where they are. And uh, thank you very much for turning that cell phone off. So tonight we have got um, two things on the menu. We've got the natural history print critique and, uh, and the results, which are coming up shortly. And JK and Nicola are organising that. Thank you, you two. And um, before we start off with that, though, Nelson Boosted, one of our members, has got some information he'd like to share. So, Nelson. Thanks, Nelson. It, it's great to have s some uh, inspiring new ways of doing things, and that might be just something for you. So um, thanks very much for that. So t tonight's, um, tonight's interest is with all these beautiful prints up here. So coming out of the 7 o'clock session with the, the critiques of, um, valuable critiques too, of, of members of our club. Thank you very much, you two who who uh, stood there and did that tonight. Um, that's one way, and another way we're going to hear tonight the critique of our natural history. So we've had a lot this, um, this month, haven't we, out and about, and it's been really lovely having this last month of winter. Um, it's been a treat. We've had all sorts, the rain, the wind, uh, snowballs last weekend, and um, a number of stargazing evenings as well. 
So we're all looking forward to the rest of this month so we can get a bit more of winter in. And um, that might show come to the end of, of the fungi that are up there. Um, but a lot of the birds are still around, so there's still a chance to get out there and and uh, get some really, really lovely images of what we have got around us. So tonight we have um, the, the Prince and JK, would you like to come up and introduce the judge, please? And then we'll get on with that part. Thank you. Hello. Uh, tonight we have the Natural History Print Competition. That's the only one this year. The first and only one this year. Okay, and um, there are 38 prints in the competition. 16 of them didn't get an award. Two, uh, oh, sorry, 16, no, I think 12 got uh, uh, acceptance, two high acceptance, two honors, and one best in show. The judge tonight is Chris Halliwell. Uh, Chris is a... Uh, Wildlife photographer who specializes in images of New Zealand wildlife and macro subjects. His images showcase wildlife in action from birds in flight to their young being fed. His macro images display the detail of beauty of the world that people just talk past or don't know exist. Chris images have appeared in New Zealand a Geographic, photographic exhibition around New Zealand, and he has won a number of photographic awards, including the 2017 and 2018 NZ, uh, PSNZ National Exhibition, Gold Medal, and William C. Davis Memorial Trophy for the Champion New Zealand Natural History Print. 2016 D Photo Amateur Photographer of the Year, Macro Section, and the 2013 Nature's Great Photography Competition. Chris was awarded 2018 and Zach IPP Nature Photographer of the Year. I now pass over the comment from the judge and the crit uh, for tonight's competition. Before we start, he's got a couple of general comments. He enjoyed, and I enjoyed in judging your print competition. I love nature and printing. So this was a great fit for me. Overall, I thought the standard was high and there were a few outstanding prints throughout the levels. Some overall comments, especially for nature competitions, naming your subject is very important. I would encourage all photographers to use either the species name or the common name or scientific name, i.e. brown bear, rather than just bear. This lets the viewer know what they are looking at. With print competitions, the printing and matting is also considered. Make sure the prints are matted correctly and not too old. The older they get, the more damaged they get. And this can take away from the print. Well done to everyone for getting your images printed. I love the variety of subjects presented to the judge. Score zero, hatching. I would have given this image a high score. It is well crafted. 
I have disqualified this image as it, is, as it does not identify the subject in the title and so does not meet the rules. Something like monarch butterfly hatching would have changed everything. Tree Reflections at St Anne's Lagoon, Cheviot. The subject of this image is the tree reflections. I only got this from the title, otherwise I would have thought it was the trees. As there is movement in the water, the reflections are not sharp, and this is off-putting. My eye is drawn to the top of the image as it is the brightest and sharpest area of the image. There also appears to be something funny happening around the top of the trees. I'm not sure what that is. It is off-putting though. If the photographer wanted to show reflections as a subject, maybe trying to photograph a section of the reflections, not all the trees, and maybe not include all the trees at the top. You could try and look from the water level down and see how that looks. Welcome Swallow, Warao. Needs less cropping, needs sharpening. This image appears to be a large crop and in doing so has lost a lot of the subject's detail, especially in its feathers. The subject's eyes are not in focus either. The nice clean background does help separate the subject from its background. Sterna striata, white fronted turn, conveys a good story, it's a good use of cropping, Rear views of nature subject to, does not usually work. Given that the subject is looking back on this occasion, it works. The subject appears to be a juvenile given the colouring of the feathers, especially on its head and wings. Adding this to the title would have helped improve this image in my view. The blue sky line that runs through the subject is also distracting. Score 2. Baby Wax Eye. Sharpness is critical in critical areas adds to impact. The background is distracting, it's too centred. The details around the subject's eye and head really add to the image. A larger depth of field would have added more detail to the rest of the subject. The dark patch that runs through the subject's head in the background is distracting. Either a little more room on the right or cropping some off the left would enhance this view and enhance this image in my view. The little catch light in the subject's eye is a nice touch. The image is not covered by the matting. You can see this on the right side. This is easy to, easy to fix as there is room under the matting on the left. Attention to detail with the matting has let this image down. My Suna SP. I like that the photographer has shown both subjects here. A little more room at the top of the image rather than the bottom would have improved this image in my view. I am also struggling to find any parts of the subjects to be sharp and in focus. This may be because of the ap aptitude or the shutter speed used or that it is a large crop. Keep going, now the focus and you are there. Score 2, C2021, A1 Leonard. Weak composition needs less cropping. A great subject to capture and it has been captured very well. I love the colours and details of the subject. From my perspective, the cropping is too tight. It appears that some of the tail of the comet has been cropped off. I am also not sure that the vertical downwards positioning works. The photographer could try a horizontal image with more room around the subject to see how that would look. Mirror me, monarch butterflies, Dania plexippus. Distracting element, subjects merge together. I get the idea of this image. In my view, it's not the best angle to show a mirror of two subjects. They are overlapping and the subject in the background is out of focus. If the photographer wanted to show this type of image, maybe trying it from the side so that both subjects would be on the same focus plane might work better. Paxilis cupunus, 
Good use of colours. I like the clean environment. There are no distracting items across or around the subject. The depth of field for the subject is spot on with the front lip and parts of underneath in focus. I would have liked to have seen a little more room at the top of the image. There are a few highlights on the top of the subject that could be toned down or removed with some more diffusion. The mat on this image is quite damaged and scratched. There is a rip on the bottom bevel as well. Time for a new mat. Score 2. Kia Juvenile. Nesta Notabilis. Good use of cropping. Background is distracting. Distracting bright areas. There are some nice feather details in this subject. The raised foot adds to the story of this image. The white patches in the background are very distracting and take my eye away from the subject, especially the ones close to the subject's head. The positioning of the subject within the frame works with room for it to move to the left. There are scratches and bubbles in this print that has impacted the image. Monarch Butterfly conveys a good story instills an emotional reaction. I like the story here between the chrysalis and the butterfly. I see that the chrysalis is tied onto the branch. This is human impact and should not be in the image. It would have been a higher scoring image if the chrysalis was attached naturally. The background is a little too bright and could be toned down and I would have liked to have seen more details in the wings of the butterfly. A striated caracara, a something, Falkland Islands. Sorry. Two centred, weak composition. With this image, my eye is fighting with the leading lines that go from left to right in the subject that is looking left. Less room on the right would help resolve this. The curled up foot is a nice extra. There are a couple of small dents in this print and this draws my eye away from the subject. Kotuku, Ardia Alba in flight, needs less cropping. The photographer has captured the movement here. The positioning of the feathers, wings add to the story. As the subject really fills the frame, I would have liked to have seen more detail in the feathers. There is a little room for the subject to move to the left, a little more room to the left, and at the top would have helped though. It does feel a little enclosed with the tight cropping. Overall, the image does feel a little dark. It's hard to see the feet and the head in its shadow. Score 2. Xanthosinemus zelandicia red damselfly. Conveys a good story, good use of colours, good use of light. This image is just about there but not quite. The focus is not on the subject's eye. It would be very hard to get both subjects' eyes in focus while taking this image from this angle, especially with the low depth of field required with a macro image. The photographer could try a larger f-stop to increase the depth of field or photographing them from the side so that both subjects would be on the same focus plane. The, back black, the background is beautifully soft and there is no real distraction. Now the focus and you would have a higher scoring image. Common orb weaver spider, Erephora pustulosa. Background is distracting, distracting bright areas. I like the wider framing of the subject. The leading lines, the web that leads you to the subject is pleasing. The underside of a subject is not the best angle to photograph. I would have loved to have seen the other side of the subject and all the colours and patterns that they have. The bright green colours in the background also draw my eye away from the subject. A blue-eyed shag. It is good to see some space around these subjects to get an understanding of their environment. As both subjects are looking left, I would like to have seen more room on the left than the right. The space on the right lets this image down. Score three. Woohoo! New Zealand grasshopper, Phyllocerodomarginale. Good use of colours. 
Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact, distracting bright areas too centred. The side-on view of this subject has helped with the shallow depth of field. I like that we can understand the subject's environment a little and the contrasting, contrasting colours of the subject and its environment works. The trick with macro images is getting the flash diffused enough not to show up too many highlights, but bright enough to light the subject. This photographer's flash could be diffused a little more. This would reduce the highlights on the body of the subject that are currently drawing my eye away from the subject's head. It would also help remove the harsh shadows. The outer focus rock in the lower right corner is also a little distracting. Amanita muscaria. Good use of cropping. Strong composition. It is good that I can see the full subject here as well as a little of its environment. I like that there is room at the top of the image for the subject to grow into. The leaf at the bottom left side is a little distracting. It is virtually impossible with, without stacking a fungi to have it all within the focus plane. So I don't mind that the front of the subject is out of focus. I like that there is room at the top of the image for the subject to grow into. He's already said that, but yeah. A small note, the thumbnail image and the print are different. This has not impacted the score. Carrera resting in sunlight. It conveys a good story. It's a good use of light. Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact. The background is distracting and it has distracting elements. I like that the subject is not just sitting on the rock. The facial expressions have helped this image. The grass in front of the subject is distracting, as in the dark patch that runs through the subject's head in the background. The highlights on the right side of the subject could be toned down. The vertical cropping and space the subject has on the right works for this image. Hyphaloma subliteriatum on forest floor. Good use of light. Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact. It is good to see the complete subject with fungi. I like it that there is nothing distracting going across or in front of the subjects and that we can get an understanding of the environment. Some more room at the top of this image for the subjects to grow into would have helped this image. It is currently top, very top heavy. The depth of field and focus on these subjects work well. Kotari with fish for young. It conveys a good story, it's a good use of colours, good use of cropping, it's a good use of light and it instills an emotional reaction. A very well spotted and captured image. The background is soft and the colours complement the subject. I like the details and the subject's feathers and the fish in the beak is a great extra. What is holding this image back from scoring higher is its title. There is no evidence that the fish is for its young. If you're going to mention it is for its young, I needed to see them in the image. White-faced heron, Ardea nova holandi with meal. Conveys a great story, displays peak of action. I don't think I've ever seen this subject with a rodent before. Well spotted and captured. The small branches on the left are distracting and so is the torn mat board on the right top edge. The placement of the subject within the frame is good and there is plenty of room for it to move to the right. A weaker, Galaris australis. It is good to see the photographer has got down to the subject's eye level for this image. There is movement in the subject's head and so the eye is a little soft. A faster shutter speed to freeze at least the subject's eye and head would improve this image. Honeybees, Apis mellifera on a sunflower, Helianthus. Good use of cropping. I like the composition for this image. It is tight in and the subjects have room to move about within the frame. The top down view has worked as has its compressed the focal plane. There are a few highlights on the subject's wings. Some diffusion could have helped this. 
White Heron and Checks, Kotoku, conveys a good story, good use of light, instills an emotional reaction. The connection between the young and the adult adds to this image, along with the composition and cropping. Showing a little of the subject's nesting environment also helps this image. The image is let down by its presentation, the right edge of the print is visible and not under the matting. Swallow stare. Good use of colours. Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact. You cannot help but be drawn into the stare of the subject. There are some nice feather details around the head. The background is soft which helps separate the subject. The little bright area at the top right hand corner is a little distracting and could be cropped out. The little catch light in the eyes adds to the image. White Heron Kotuku Pier Feeding Chick It is hard to see the action or feeding going on in this image. If it was not in the title, I would not have known what was happening here. I like the positioning of the subjects and the room around them. The image has good balance. Some of the flax leaves that go across the lower subjects are a little distracting. It took me a long time to see the second chick and the eye that is directly looking at you. A nice find when you see it. Score three, Kotuku Colony. Conveys a good story. There is a lot going on in this image. I am fighting with myself with a round crop. It works with some of the shapes and then some of the action in this image. Adult and young and adult flying off. A quite close to the edge. I like how you get to see the environment of the colony. New Zealand fur seals, Kaikoura, conveys a good story. The interaction between these two subjects add to the story. Both subjects are sharp. These could be toned down. The subjects could do with a little more room around them. They feel enclosed with this tight crop. Having both subjects' mouths open is a nice touch. Australasian Crested Grebe, Kamana, offering fish. Conveys a good story, good use of cropping. There is a lot going on in this image and it all adds to the story. The subjects have room to move within the frame. What holds this image back for me is the bright area of water above the subjects. This could be post toned down in post-production. Male blackbird with chicks, Christchurch, conveys a good story, instills an emotional reaction. There is a good story in this image and a good connection between the adult and its young. I don't mind the man-made setting, even though it's a little off-putting. A more natural environment would have helped this image though. A little more room at the top of the image would also help, especially since the young are looking up to the top of the image. There are details throughout the adult bird feathers which is good, especially with a black subject. They are easy to lose. Score three, Kaikoura Albatross. Good use of cropping, good use of light. There is a lot to like about this image, the composition and placement of the subject within the frame. The catch light in the eye, the little bow wave and the simple background. There are details in the subject's feathers. It is let down by its title. I needed to know the type of albatross that I'm looking at. White fronted tune, the mating season. It conveys a good story. It's a good use of cropping and good use of light. It instills an emotional reaction. Sharpness is critical and sharpness in critical areas add to impact. A lovely image of the subject with its prey. I don't mind the dark background. It draws my attention to the head of the subject as it's the brightest area. The details in and around the head of the subject and the positioning of the fish add to the image. In my view, what lets this image down is its title. There is nothing in the image that indicates its mating. Score four. Adelaide Penguin Feeding Chick conveys a good story, displays peak of action, distracting element. 
There is a lot to like about this image, the connection between the two main subjects, though something, hang on, the low point. The low point of view that the photographer has used and the mostly clean background. I find the penguin in the background a little distracting, especially as it intersects with the main subject. If it was not for this, the image would have scored higher. Putukitiki, offering food to chick, conveys a good story, instills an emotional reaction, sharpness and critical areas add to impact. A nice moment captured between adult and young here. The water droplets on the back of the adult are a nice touch. The interaction between the subjects add to this image. To take this image to the next level, I do wonder if it was possible to get lower down in the water, which might have helped to reduce the brightness of the water. Score 5. Yellow Winged Data. Sympterum Flavialum. What a stunning image. The, eye, the subject is sharp where it needs to be. The eyes. The background is out of focus and the greens help separate the subject. The placement of the subject within the frame is perfect. Well done to the photographer. Phidippus otiosis with prey, jumping spider. Conveys a good story, displays peak of action, good use of colors, good use of light, and stills an emotional reaction. Sharpness is critical Sharpness in critical areas add to the impact and it's got a strong composition. A lovely spotted and captured image. For a macro image, the focus is spot on and the lighting is well diffused. The complementary colours in the background works well. There does appear to be some dust spots in the background that could have been removed, especially the one close to the subject on the left side. Carrera Era, Raspberry Flat, score six. Good use of colours, good use of cropping, good use of light. Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact. There is a lot to like about this image, the soft colours of the background, the composition and placement of the subject, the catch light in the subject's eye, the details of the feathers. It is a very pleasing image. Overall, a very well seen and captured image. Yeah, congratulations to those who enter into this competition. Uh, now I'm going to give away the certificate. Uh, can I ask Diana to come forward to give away the certificate? New Zealand grasshopper, uh, Bevan Tillett. <laughs> Amanita Mascaria, uh, John McCall. Carrera, Don Cut, High High Four Loma, 
uh, Bivan Tulip. Cotier with fish for young, Donkert. White face, white face heron, uh, Barry Dench. Waka, Diana Andrews. Honey Bee, uh, Jane Ford. <laughs> White Face Heron, Tash. Swallow stay, Nicola. White face heron, John McCall. Kotuku, fem, uh, colony, Mike White. New Zealand fur seals, Janine Man. <laughs> Australasia uh, crystal gr grip, me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mel Blackbird, Janine Money. Kaikula Albatross, Nicola. White Fronted Turn, Bivan Tulip. Adelie Penguin, Pen uh, Penelope Michael, you want to take it? <laughs> don't cut. Yeah, sorry, I can I don't. I don't want to attend to. Count. Yeah. Yellow wind data. Myself. Philippus, me. Corey, Corey, uh, Corelia, uh, my wife. Congratulations. Uh, Mike, would you like to talk about it? No. <laughs> uh, this was on this year's Wanaka field trip. Um, there was a couple of us went up uh, towards Mount Aspiring National Park up to Raspberry Flat uh, one afternoon um, to see what we could see. Took a nice slow trip. We, by the time we got to Raspberry Flat, we only had about half an hour to explore and then had to head home. And as we were um, heading down the road, I spotted what I thought was a hawk to start with and then noticed that it was a falcon. Uh, so we screeched the car to a halt, expecting it to fly off into the distance. And it sat there, so we cranked the window down. And um, I think Diane, is she here tonight? No, Di Kelsey was with us. 
Um, so we cranked the windows down, poked the long lenses out and shot away till the car pulled up behind us wondering what we were doing. <laughs> uh, so we said, there's a falcon on the post and he goes, oh, okay. So we grabbed a couple of shots and carried on to keep the road clear. So it was a pretty lucky uh, encounter, but it was my first one with the karara, so I was quite happy to grab it. Yeah. Uh, it was shot with um, the Canon RF 100 to 500 um, at 500. There is a slight crop on it, um, even though we were close. So uh, I've taken out some of the background um, just to close it on the bird. Yeah, I talk about these two images that I have here. One is the data, and the other one is the jumping spider. That was the both of them were taken pre pandemic in in Singapore. Um, this uh, spider, jumping spider, um, uh, was taken with a 100 mil lens Canon, and um, I think it was um, taken with an f stop of. 11 to 22, I can't remember which one, probably 16. And the shutter speed is somewhere about 125 with a few flash. Uh, and I think I have the uh, close-up lens attached to the lens. The few flash is, I think, set about a quarter uh, power. Uh, yeah. Okay. And the data that I have, yeah, also taken with a hundred mil lens. It was uh, not too far from the the data, and uh, so. The close-up uh, attachment wasn't used in this lens, in, in this case. But uh, I did use uh, a diffuser attached to the flashlight. Uh, but uh, because it's quite a, it's a distance away from the data, so the power was, I think, set to 100%. Yeah. And I, I, I cropped this slightly so uh, to feel the frame. Thank you. Um, are there any other honours? High acceptance. Dawn, would you like to talk about this one? Not really. <laughs> It's um it's a joy when you catch them doing something like this, isn't it? Feeding the young or carrying the young on the back. Is there another high acceptance we've got or somebody who's here? Uh, okay, Penelope's not here. Bevan, tell us about this one. said the title the title let it down uh, which I can understand why because it's all very well for me I, I know what's going on but what it is uh, and I just relate this to human behavior see these um, they're really what he's doing is just parading this hey look what look how good I am uh, I can do this for you will you come and be my wife will you come and mate with me and we'll have nests and babies and all sorts of things like that so it's uh, um, that's in fact what is going on, but I know that, and maybe the judge is not so sure or, or so, but uh, when you get a rock that's domed, um, they actually land. He's waiting to see an attractive female come near, and then he'll fly over and jiggle it in front. And often it's such a cluttered mess then, so just to get the male on his own is, is the challenge. And of course, uh, to do justice to the black and the white on the bird is can be rather hard and a bit challenging, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's about all that I can pass on. Anybody got a question or? 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, don't go there. This is a... This, yeah. <laughs> it's another language of their own. <laughs> Whose is this one? Bevan. Oh, here you go. Tell us about those... Uh, there's not a lot to say, really. Um, it's uh, it's finding the damn things. That's what half the trouble is. You know, taking the photograph is really, to be quite honest, I think is the easy part. I'm very fortunate. I've got a uh, a wife that'll um, that's very good. And while I'm photographing that, and I'm not able to get up and down quite as quick as I used to be able to, so it takes me a little bit longer to photo to to do justice. And while I'm doing that, she's, she's bored to tears sort of thing, so she goes looking for the next one, hunting around or making a coffee or doing something like that. But uh, So it's finding it. So between my wife and myself, um, we probably get, you know, do reasonably well. But I think the secret is you've just got to don't be tempted to take the first or the second one you see. Uh, or group that you see, um, look around plenty because you're far better to spend your time on a good example than you are on a half example. So uh, that's about all I can say. That's taken up at the Nelson Lakes. Oh, it's going to cost you, yeah. <laughs> Just at, at the back, yeah, up the back a wee bit. No, you've just got to really look around uh, because um, I've been going to the Nelson Lakes now for probably you know, quite a few years. I've never seen them up there before, and yet there's a nice little a nice little group. You, you've just got to keep going going back because they're always different. And even if they grow in the same place, the chances are that there'll be small variations to the same species, uh, and that I find amusing too. This last season was the season for the uh, for the blue caps. The Antiloma hot steterized. They were everywhere on the west coast. So, <laughs> unfortunately, n now they probably will disappear for a year or two before they come b before we have another season like this. But there are always a few of them. There's always a few of them around, and um, especially at the Arnold Power Station. But anyway, that's um, the Nelson Lakes is is a very good area if anybody's. Um, you know, wanting to get reasonably serious and a good variety, there's there's quite an area and there's quite a bit of variety up there. So it's as good or better than Coal Creek. Would that have been June this year? Uh, no, no. Uh, it would be the end of May, probably about the 20th of May. Does anybody else want to talk about their one? Oh, we do need to hear about this one with the little rodent, don't we? <laughs> here, Barry. I'll just come in behind you here. Well, this is a crab shot. Um, it was out at Tamutu. You know, that's the, where the outlet of Lake Ellesmere is. And this thing was just poking around the grass. Um, obviously giving away fishing. Then I looked up and, hey, bingo. Um, it's just a grab shot um, because in a flash it was all gone and it just carried on doing what herons do. Yep. Saw it up in the air um, and it was gone. But you can see the, the mouse is dead so it obviously spared it. So you don't need a cat, just horror heron. Very efficient. I've got a um, a 500 mil a thing called a PF lens, which is pretty spectacular. So it's virtually uncropped. Yeah, that's a great shot. What's the next one we've got there, Ian? Oh, Diana's weka. How are we going for time? Yes, we can hear about your weka, Diana. It was, um, uh, what's it called? Um, 
Westland. Um, in the, the, no, no. Where the um, I can't even remember. Where the um, rock, uh, the uh, no, no, not on the coast. Further up. Inland, inland, yes. Um, Wekas are actually very easy. Not, they're not frightened of humans, and they just go around doing what they do, as you see them there. And um, it's um, low light, so you have to um, have the necessary settings. But... Um, I think for all nature, F11 or F8, is, is you have to go that to get the ones uh, that are moving around in the, in the bush. Thanks, Diana. I think, Ian, we've probably got time for one more. Who else is here that has an image? Jan? Where's she? You don't? Okay. Oh, John, here we are. Tell us about how you, where you went and how you got this shot. Th thank you. This was on a, um, a CPS trip down to the uh, White Heron Colony, and uh, we were just lucky to get uh, some birds together. This uh, lower adult was actually feeding the, the young chick there, and there was another chick there with it. So uh, it looked a very good photograph, so I clicked the shutter. And that's what it turned out. Great. So you had uh, inclement weather as well, lots of rain and. Yes. And that was that was taken from a hide, from the other side of the nesting colony. So it was quite a long shot, and I had a a Sony. Um, with a telephoto lens, 300 mil, I think it is. And uh, so that's what it was. My daughter's ex one, and the, the trade off. <laughs> Thanks, John. I can highly recommend that field trip if we have that again down to Wataroa and to see the herons. And uh, don't worry if it's raining or hailing. When I went, it was hailing, and it was um, the best time to get those birds, the, the white doesn't blow out um, when it's raining. So even if it seems like you don't want to get out there in the wet, um, just make sure you dress sensibly and, and go anyway. Highly recommend that field trip. And so thanks Ian for finding all of those. Does anyone else want to talk about theirs? No, we'll just move on. And so this evening, uh, it's coming to an end. Uh, I'd like to um, talk about other field trips that have been, and um, that's appropriate. Mike White, thank you very much for taking the, the Mount Cook um, field trip recently. And a, a few people have, who are here went to it, and um, I see a few snow angels and snowballs flying and <laughs> plenty of snow. Mike, would you like to say anything about the weekend? So, yes, and you even got some sky in as well, which is, which is pretty awesome. And the weekend before that, uh, Heidi led the CPS with the winter school, and that was really amazing too. And uh, when she's back sometime, I know she's going to show us um, an AV of some of the samples of, of work that we achieved at that winter school. Uh, so again, all these people who put extra effort into making the club run, thank you very much because it's giving us all the opportunity to learn more and develop more with our photography. And um, speaking of making more photographs, 
uh, I just would like to promote competitions that are coming up. And one of the national competitions is the Nelson Triptych. And you'll find that through the PZNZ website or uh, just on the web, look up Nelson Triptych competition. And that's open, all the rules and regulations and what have you are there. It's open till the 31st of this month. So we've got this month to put, uh, I think, six examples. If you can make six, that's the maximum you can put in. Uh, so, coming back to our club now, CPS, the uh, MDC for this month is transparent. So, um, get your cameras out and make something that uh, is your interpretation of transparent for this month, and that ends on the 31st of August also. And... Uh, C grade, C grade is coming up with the print and the, the PI, and uh, that's the digital image and the print, and that's due on Wednesday the 10th. Have I got that right? Thank you. So moving on to next week, what's happening? Seven o'clock next week, we've got the C grade and new members, and um, not you didn't know that. Oh, well. <laughs> we've got a whole week to work that out. Yeah, something will come up. <laughs> yes. And uh, in the eight o'clock session, um, we have um, the set challenge explained by Ian Walls. Is, is he still in the room? Ian, do you want to give a, a, um, a hint as to what you might... So we have a few more entries this year. It's always been one of my favourites, actually. The, the challenge that you put forward uh, really makes me think about how I can use my photography in a slightly different way. So thank you very much for doing that on a, on a yearly basis. So folks, come along next, um, next week at 8 o'clock and hear what Ian has to say to put out a challenge for us all. And so that really brings us to the end of the evening. Um, I would just like to thank everyone for coming and, and having your beautiful prints here. We um, had Kelvin Ed, thank you for opening and closing today. Meeting and greeting, JK and, and John Hawkins, thank you for giving out the certificates that if you are here and you haven't picked up a certificate at the door that's yours, please um, pick that up before you go. And um, Alistair and Ian on projection, thank you. That ran really smoothly this evening. And um, on sound, we've got Gordon and Wayne. Thank you very much for doing that. And uh, the 7 o'clock tutorial, again, thank you for your valued experience and comments to John Suckling and Ian Walls. It's great to hear your different points of view on images that we're creating. And... Uh, have we got supper this evening? John, John Casey, yes. So join us through in the other room for a cuppa. And again, if you would like more information about the, the mat, mats that Nelson talked about, go, go see how you're going through to supper too, Nelson. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for you guys at home. And uh, drive safely home, everyone who's here. Good night.